So before starting the video, I have three questions for you. How did you like the trailer? Did it bring back the past to you? And did you actually reclaim your life as the hashtag of the Tata Safari goes? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jatin. You are watching 91 Wheels and this is the all new Tata Safari. When Tata announced that they will be bringing the safari back, I was really happy. But little did I know that it was the Gravitas all along which was showcased to us at the last year Auto Expo. Another thing which is quite noticeable and that was when Tata announced that the safari will be back, it created a stir on the internet. There were two sets of people divided, one who were in favour of the name and the other who were not. It did not bring justice to the legendary 4x4 which it missed on. However, there was one thing in common and Tata understood it really well. It was the emotion which brought these people together and today we have with us is the all new Tata Safari. So without any further ado, let's start the video. You see this front look? Well, it surely reminds you of the Harrier, doesn't it? Yes, it does. What differentiates the Safari is this new tri-aero design signature grille which now gets chrome insert. Moving to the side profile, well, the Safari is now longer in length and also taller in height than the Harrier. You see these stepped up roof? Well, this is to accommodate the last row of passengers and these roof rail really hides the stepped up roof. Another thing about these roof rails are that they are quite functional. Yes, 130 kg of load carrying capacity if you are choosing the variants with no sunroof. On the side profile, you do get these flagship 18-inch alloy wheels which are exclusive to the Safari. You see this large third window quarter glass? It is quite large and it makes the cabin breathable for the people sitting in the third row. Moving to the design of the rear, then the Safari, well, it is surely a boxy design and I am not complaining about that. I actually love it. It gets tweaked LED tail lights and the bumper design is also a little different. So that was all about the exterior, but what it packs inside, let's find out. Now, when you step inside the Safari, it is the interiors where a lot of changes are happening. You do notice a familiarity, but then no point for guessing which car is it. The oyster white interiors and the signature ash dashboard really brings out the true cabin experience of the new Safari. You do get an electronic parking brake which adds to the level of premiumness the Safari will sit on. Yes. And you do get this 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and it now also gets Ira, which is the intelligent real-time assist which lets you control some functions of the car via your smartphone. You can see the features here. The new Safari also has a lot of cubby holes. Yes space for your family, friends and everything. Safari has got you covered. These bottle holders, umbrella holder, you just stuff things inside the Safari and it has got you covered. Now when you are seated at the driver's seat, you do notice that this armrest is not adjustable. For longer journeys, you do need an adjustable armrest which the Tata Safari misses out on. However, to add the convenient feature, it comes with 12 volt socket, two USB ports and a cooling function. So yeah, that point can be balanced out. It gets tilt and telescopic adjustment steering wheel and it misses out on the ventilated seats. Well, this is a feature that you don't need it, but then when you have it, you don't complain it. And it is surely a bonus for people living in the northern areas where temperature reach as high as 50 degrees. So yeah, a slight minus points for Tata for missing out on the ventilated seats. Well, the exciting part is the captain seats in the middle, but I am driving the seven seat version. So let's see how the Safari packs in space on the inside. And that is 
the middle row now one thing which you will never complain of is when you are sitting in the middle row yes for people who likes to be chauffeur driven you have enough under thigh support enough headroom and enough knee room to stretch your legs for the long distance journeys what the safari add been is that the new boss mode well you have to sit behind the co drivers and i'll show you how it functions you see this button right here well you just have to manually press it forward and then all the room that you want to have so really you can stretch your legs and enjoy a comfortable journey and this wheel base of 2741 mm really surprises you with the lot of cabin space inside well the cabin of the safari is pretty huge but then this widest panoramic sunroof in the segment really takes it a class apart you see you do not feel claustrophobic and the cabin feels airy and breathable but what it's like having to seat in the third row well let's find out now to get inside the third row when you are having a bench setup it's quite complicated and it gets easier when you have the captain seat in the captain seat you just slide in between and voila you are in the third row however in the bench type setup you pull this lever and it automatically goes this way and now i am in the back seat so right now i am in the third row of seating and you will say that jatin how is the placement well i can say in one word that it is not for adults three words actually right well it is surely not for adults as you lack under thigh support and the knee room is also not that good i stand at 5 feet 9 inch tall and i have adjusted the middle row to my height and when i am seated at the last row there is just not room for another person i mean there is but then your knees will be you get it right yes it is best suited for children and for people who are looking for the convenient feature well you do get usb ports right here ac controls on the right hand side and the ac placements are such that it really blows the cool air in your face and in summers that is actually a great feature so if you ask me how is the boot space when all three rows are seated up i'll show you that's it i mean this is the space you get and when you are traveling with your family of 6 to 7 people i don't think that this will be enough however you can always fold in the third row of seats and you can pack in whole lot of luggage but then that is done when you are traveling with fewer people so how does the new tata safari drive well for starter it surely misses out on the 4x4 modes Oh, you kind of knew that, but that's nice. But the Safari makes up for this. Yes, the drive modes now get paired with the ESP terrain modes, and you do get normal, wet, and rough mode selection, so that you can conquer these surfaces easily. So, how is the cabin experience and the driving out in the city and open roads? Let's go and check it out. Now, when you are driving the Safari. One thing which you pretty much noticed is how quiet the cabin is. The NVH levels are supremely good, and this is because of the refined 2-liter turbo diesel motor, which churns out 170 PS of power with peak torque of 350 newton meter. What I really love is the six-speed automatic gearbox, which feels pretty confident and makes the city driving easier. It pretty much adds the convenience factor. And when you are out on the highways and open road and you want to overtake. Press in the throttle, and there you go. The turbo pulls in. There is enough torque, and the driving mode is more than sufficient. But if you want to have a little fun, you can always switch to the manual mode. Now, what it does is that it holds the gear, pumps till the red line, and it just doesn't upshift. That is good, no? No? All right. talking about the ride and handling first the ride the suspension is quite good you see when driving over small to medium size potholes the safari feels pretty confident and you get enough response from it it is the last size potholes which you have to drive 
a little bit slower because to take care of the person sitting in the third row and it glides over them easily and what I really love is how the safari has minimal rolling over the Harrier. The steering feels confident at triple digits which a lot of people in the Harrier complain that the steering feels light but now it has slightly improved if you notice it in the safari. So now I am driving the 6 speed manual and I have to say that if you love stick shift then you should choose this one over the convenient automatic. The low end torque is so much good that I am at 20 km per hour and I am driving in the third gear and it feels so good. I mean this engine is so peppy, the low end torque is amazing and it feels lively too when you just press the throttle and it just glides. However. There is one drawback and that is the clutch travel is a little too long. So for the bumper to bumper city traffic, the manual one will definitely be a drawback. So I will choose the automatic for this factor only, else the manual has its own fun. Oh yeah it does. Oh yeah. You always get a grin on your face when uh, you are just pressing the throttle hard and the motor just pumps in the torque. Yes, the turbo just pulls in. So this was all about the all new Tata Safari and the bookings for the same will open on February 4. The new Safari surely packs in modern feature but then definitely misses out on basics like wireless charging, 360 degree camera, electric tailgate and ventilated seat for sure. So will Safari be your next buy? Will you buy this for pure emotional connection or you will buy it for its own aura, dominance and personality? Do tell us in the comment section below. So if you like watching our video, do hit the like button, subscribe the channel and press the bell notification so you receive the daily updates. I am your host Jatin, signing off.